Okay, so this is the example scene for chapter 5. Um, you'll notice we have this little scene set up here, and there are a couple things going on. There's a little camera here. It has uh, some Cinemachine stuff on there, and it's not really relevant to what we're teaching in the book, but we use it. Uh, it's one of Unity's new features in 2017, and it helps track this Boyd, or this Boyd uh, group here. Um, and so we look here at this target here. Um, it's got this target movement guy, and we have these background objects, these little pillars in the distance. The only reason we use these is to give perspective. So as the camera moves, you can see that because it's kind of a simple environment and it's got a a, a, a sky box, then you can't really tell when the camera moves. Um, so we added these just for perspective. Uh, so let's just run this real quick. Uh, when you run it, it'll spawn a number of voids here which are determined by the flock controller and so the flock size is 10 here's the speed modifier the alignment cohesion separation and follow weight uh, if you're familiar with uh, Reynolds flocking algorithm then you'll know that these are kind of standard um, flocking parameters uh, and then we have a target so they'll try to follow this guy here that we we highlighted earlier of course you can update the number uh, for voids in the flock and hit run and there's now more okay so the flock controller code uh, is is uh, controlling some of this stuff so we'll open that up just be a moment okay so here are all the serialized fields that we're able to edit and you notice we use the header uh, attribute here which in the inspector shows up as this little heading so void data target data and this flock list gets populated at runtime. Um, so let's take a look here. On awake, we do some, some initialization. So we run through the flock list, and then we create, we instantiate voids. Uh, the voids are created from the prefab that we set uh, right here, uh, right here. Sorry. Uh, and then we add them to the flock list. So this is what gets inst uh, initialized at runtime. And then we have this flock uh, method. Uh, so essentially, what it's doing, it's it's gonna get the flock uh, direction, center, uh, the target direction, and the separation values and initialize them. Uh, and then we're going to run through the void, uh, sorry, each uh, void in the flock, and we're going to apply all these different, um, uh, they're basically the different vectors that we add up uh, to give you the final direction vector. So we have the flock direction with the center and the separation, and then we average out all of those values and we normalize them and apply a weight value that is unique for each one and these get set here these are these modifiers and weights and then we return that final vector from the flock method um, so here in the target uh, again we calculate the next movement point so essentially what we're doing here is we're giving it random positions for the flock to follow. Uh, and we do constrain it within the bounds that we specify here, 20, 10, and 20. So it doesn't fly off like into the distance. It'll always give you a random point within the, that bounding box you provide with a certain move speed, turn speed, and target point tolerance. So that's how close it has to be to the target to consider it done, and then it'll calculate the next point. And you notice all this does is return a random position within the bounds you specified. Okay. Um, so we have the flock controller and the void is the last part. So the void has a script on it. Uh, it's a prefab so you kind of have to dig in to, to get to it. But essentially what we're doing here is we are on update. We're calling flock controller dot flock. And because the voids need to be sort of aware of one another in a very generic way, we call each void is calling the flock controller and calling the flock method on it, passing in itself its position and its current direction. And what you're gonna get back from that, if you remember, is this new vector, which has all the new weights applied to it. Uh, and so again, uh, you kinda of have to read the chapter or be familiar with the Reynolds algorithm to, to understand exactly what's happening. But in, in simple terms, is it's calculating three different things, really. One is how close you want it to be to the center, how, much, how hard it's gonna to try to get to the center of the flock, how much it wants to stay in alignment with the rest of the voids and how much it wants to stay away from its nearest voids. And so once we weight all these values, that gives you the final um, 
the final vector. And so then we're going to update the direction of the, of the void and move it towards that uh, new direction that you've calculated. So what you end up with is sort of this realistic uh, movement where they're kind of like floating away and they kind of move closer to each other, but they're still following this target. And it, there's a little bit of randomness built into it. Um, so it looks a little more believable than if they just kind of like beep, 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 you know, went uh, in straight lines uh, with hard turns. Um, and so that's in essence what the, the blocking algorithm does. Okay, so the other thing we have in this example is two uh, crowd uh, examples. So this is crowd simulation. And the way we set this up is with uh, nav mesh agents and a nav mesh. So if I select navigation, I see that it built nav mesh here. And so we have these two groups, uh, or sorry, well, visually there's two groups, but essentially we broke them up into, uh, like I think, three different sets, yeah. So we have red team one, a zero, one and two, and blue team zero, one and two. And there's just a collection of capsules here. And these capsules are nav mesh agents. So naturally they're able to move through this nav mesh uh, in the scene. And there's a red target. So the red team is gonna try to move to the red target. And the blue team, it's going to move to the blue target. So when you run it, they're just kind of going to move towards each of these targets. And as they do it, they're going to avoid one another and sort of find the best path to where they're going. There's a little bit of congestion there, but they finally make it through. And they'll just kind of distribute around uh, each of the targets. Fairly straightforward there. The next example sort of illustrates that you can have obstacles and dynamic obstacles that will affect how they pathfind. So this little door here will open up randomly. There you go. And so these guys were starting to go here and they decided this is a better path. And when it closes, these guys that are going here won't be able to, so they're gonna have to reroute and go the other way. Same with the blue guys going across. Uh, in this case, these blue guys are like, yep, this is the best path, so they kind of go through there. Um, and it's completely dynamic. And so when we have the nav mesh, uh, window selected, we'll see what that looks like here. So you see that when the, the obstacle lifts, then this connection is completed. The other thing that we do in this scene, uh, or at least that we mentioned in the book, is the debug information uh, for, the, um, for the nav mesh agent. And so here you can kind of see if you select them, you can kind of see some of their debug information. So these are the meshes uh, in their grid that they're going down. And you can see their direction vectors, right? And you can see how they individually sort of find their way uh, through this, and they're all navigating through the through uh, this basically like kind of like an A star. You use a grid here, you use a nav mesh, and they all find their best cost to to the path they're going to. Um, as far as code, there's not anything really special here. Essentially, all the here we're just showing off what Unity can do without very much code. So the crowd agent is a very simple script that will assign the destination of that agent equal to the position of the target, which again is the red target or blue target for the uh, blue team and red team respectively. And that's it for the chapter five sample code.